it's time to welcome on the stage Kerry Murphy, founder of The Fabricant. Hello, Kerry. How hey, are you hey. today? I'm very well. How about yourself? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, The Fabricant needs no presentation. We can just say that it's a digital fashion house that operates at the intersection of technology and fashion but everyone here knows who is Gary Murphy and what is the fabricant, of course. So I will leave it up to you. And so uh, we will meet at the end, okay? Cool, sounds great. Thank you so Thank much you for that intro. Much. Thank you. Hey everybody. So I'm gonna try to share my screen uh, because I have a presentation. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to go into full screen mode over there so everybody can see it. So again, thank you so much for that intro. I, I really appreciate it. It's year 2021. And uh, to come with an intro like that, uh, I'm very thankful of because in 2018, digital fashion was uh, was not even a term that was being used. So I'm, I'm very happy to see uh, the, the mainstream side that digital fashion is going towards. Uh, so yeah, my name is Kerry Murphy. I'm uh, half Finnish, half American, born and raised in Finland, and I'm based in Amsterdam basically the past 20 years. And I have a film and visual effects education, and I worked in the advertising industry for quite, quite some time, and always wanted to get out of advertising and figure out how to use the, the tools and trade and my skills in, in an impactful way to try and do a good impact in the world. And it just realized that there was a lot of things to be done in fashion and uh, hence we started digital only fashion to make it more sustainable uh, so today i'm just going to talk about a little bit what what we do talk about some projects that we were going to do i was going to talk about the off-white project that we d done last year but i just realized that it's actually still hasn't been released so i can't talk about that um, maybe most of you know about the nft hype happening in the blockchain space when if we've been doing nft since 2019 so i'll talk a little bit about that and how that really uh, fits into our roadmap and what we're doing over there uh, so there's really two sides to our business one is working to together with fashion brands we do digital product creation, so digital samples. We create content for B2B, and we create content for B2C. Uh, so we are always digital and never physical. We have no interest in making physical clothing, and we're true believers in the digital-only fashion industry. And we say that we waste nothing but data and exploit nothing but our imagination. So the sustainability side that a digital fashion house has to worry about is the electricity use of our computers, of the rendering, the servers, the cloud services that we use, the backups, so on and so forth. Uh, so it's much easier than having to deal with the full supply chain of the fashion industry. So we converge different industries. So I always say that the fabricant is a bridge between fashion, visual effects, gaming, and blockchain. So essentially combining the technologies from these great industries together with the passion and the craftsmanship of the fashion industry itself. And we create these type of things. And this was for a campaign that we did in 2018 already for a physical fashion brand called Marques Almeida, who's a Portuguese brand. And they made this super cool puffer jacket that we ended up animating for IT Hong Kong. So the new digital only fashion industry, it's true. right now the opportunity is mainly in gaming. Uh, there's numbers like, you know, Fortnite selling digital only clothing for 60 million per month, uh, you know, generating a lot of revenue in a year just from the skins and assets. Then the other one is a social wardrobe, essentially meaning that you can put digital clothing onto your pictures. And then the digital couture side that, you know, we're really focusing on, which is kind of the luxury of digital only fashion industry. And the picture that you see here is the digital only garment that we sold on the blockchain in 2019 uh, for nine and a half thousand dollars back then that was 54 ETH uh, 54 ETH right now is worth almost two hundred thousand dollars so if you if you look at it from that perspective uh, it's actually worth two hundred thousand dollars right now uh, that started a massive uh, PR wave 
for us that really put digital own fashion on, on the map. And ever since the pandemic, it's really accelerated. And especially this year with the whole NFT hype going on, it's even accelerated even further and really helped us uh, curate that narrative more that we have been doing this uh, for quite a while already. And it's only two years, but two years in the blockchain industry is like two decades. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the, the, the fashion brand projects that we do, because there's a lot of validity and overlap between the two different business models that we have. Uh, you know, working with fashion brands is great because I love the passion and the creativity of the fashion industry itself. And as I said, we do a lot of stuff uh, like digital sampling, sampling. So you could call this digital product creation, which I call more informative ways of presenting clothing. This just in, informs the consumer of like what they're about to buy, you know, how it looks like, how it fits on a the body. These are the items. Uh, but then we start taking it further where we start including narratives on it. So we start, you know, talking about avatars, avatar posing, uh, the environments, the lighting, the animation, uh, you know, just creating these kind of like what we call key visuals, uh, you know, to just populate basically all social channels, public channels uh, with this type of content all the way to in-store, all the way to interactive experiences. And we always say the true value of this is you don't need to fly out a 30 people crew out into Latin America desert to do this photo shoot. You know, we just need a few people in our studio in Amsterdam to create a photo shoot in the Atacama desert in Chile, for instance. So saving a lot of cost and saving a lot of uh, uh, waste in, in the process. So multiple different images. And then we created this video as well out of it, which is basically the, the narration uh, uh, the, the lack of water in the future because of the amount of water that the fashion industry actually uses in the production of this clothing. Uh, you can see all of that content on our website. Uh, so I'm just going to skip through all of this uh, quite fast because I have very little time and a lot of things to, to tell. Uh, so this was together with Adidas and this was actually an NFT campaign. Just Adidas didn't know about it at first. Uh, because when we first started talking about it, it was all about ena enabling the creators by giving away this file for free. Now, think about the fashion industry being extremely sensitive and uh, protective and uh, secretive about everything. We wanted to go against that and say, let's give out this pro this file for free and see what people are going to come up with. Uh, you do need 3D knowledge to use this because it is a 3D file. There was more than 1,200 downloads and more than 300 submissions. And this, this was the, the garment. You can also see, view it on our website. Absolutely beautiful uh, garment from the Carly Kloss uh, collection together with Adidas. Uh, we, we hired a uh, Hong Kong based artist to do some key visuals again. Uh, Blake Catherine, I think she's Canadian, uh, just creating beautiful imagery around the jacket. And then once we started receiving the submissions from the creators themselves, there were things like these, you know, like this, this is beautiful art, you know, like uh, a lot, a lot of different uh, references go into this. Um, you know, like this was like from a Ukrainian creator, again, a whole different vision to the manga vision. And uh, I don't even know where this guy is from, but again, a great reinterpretation of, you know, like what you can do with just a simple narrative around one garment. Um, yeah, I won't, I won't go through the details of that project. It's very rich, it took us like six months to do, and there's a lot of validity in it, but everything that we do is interconnected. Uh, so feel free to reach out with any questions after this presentation to me, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, so Buffalo London, Buffalo, maybe you know Buffalo shoes, the, the shoes made uh, famous by Spice Girls in the 90s, big platform shoes. I used to go to a European school where there were a lot of Italians there. All the Italians loved the Buffalo shoes. I, I actually absolutely hated it back then, but these days I love it, especially because it's a brand who was willing to take a risk with us to create a digital only shoe. And we, we, with the pandemic going on, we asked people, what are you burning for? What is it? What is your biggest desire right now? So we created flaming shoes for everybody to wear and we dressed influencers. And these were people who actually bought the shoe and you could buy the shoe for $30 for your Instagram picture, or you could even buy a video with the burning of it for $60. And somebody told me that the person on the right is actually a famous person, Italy. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know who it is, but. Um, maybe some of you do. 
So yeah, uh, next steps, we're going to do a blockchain marketplace uh, auction with it. So it's going to be an NFT and we're going to tie it into an AR shoe wearing experience. So people can actually wear it. Um, this is one of my all time favorite uh, collaborations, simply because the amount of utility and for digital only fashion to become massive, we need to give it the utility. Basically, how do you wear it? What can you do with it? Where can you use it? How do you use it? All the big questions that we do. So we created this football gala dress for a football game. And the, the people that we worked with were like, well, why don't we just do shorts and t-shirt? And we're like, well, it's the virtual world. Why would we just replicate the, the real world when the virtual world is so much richer? So this is what we created. Basically, a, a, a two colorway items with uh, several different items, headpiece, gala dress, football glove to make this whole key look. And the image that you see here on the right is you can buy it on three different marketplaces. You can unlock it in three different games and you can go to dressx.com and you can actually get yourself dressed in it. So this campaign's not fully done yet, uh, but there's way more stuff coming up. And this was one of the most recent ones. We did this together with the artifact guys. Uh, we created a full collection and we sold out in nine minutes and generated more than 60,000 euros of revenue from digital only fashion assets. Basically selling the, these garments in three different colorways. And you see that there's a lot of accessories and a lot of craftsmanship went into this, like more than two months of actually putting these items together. And we wanted to create a lot of different accessories that you could then wear. So here you see me wearing my digital earrings as a Snapchat filter, you know? So these are the type of things that we're gonna start seeing coming more. And I would never ever wear earrings in my real life. But in my virtual life, I feel very safe doing it. So yeah, again, one of my favorite collaborations. The Artifact guys are great. Uh, they just received uh, more than 8 million in funding and they sold sneaker, digital only sneakers for $3.1 million. So digital only fashion industry is moving forward fast. And this is our most recent collection that we did. We just released it last week together with a fantastic Italian 3D artist called Teresa Manzo. And this is what we created. We talk about body positivity. We talk about gender neutrality. And we talk about adding value uh, into, the, into the aesthetic of fashion by creating something that is unusual, might feel a little bit different. But the more you look at it, you start seeing the intricacies of the, of the different craftsmanship that goes into it. And here's one of the videos. and you can wear it in your virtual life. And you can buy the NFTs on Foundation. So anybody who wants to be the owner of these garments can very well be so. And we always say that the, the more items you own from the fabricant, the bigger the payoff will be in the future. So yeah, that's uh, basically a very quick presentation from me. Uh, we work with a lot of fantastic fashion brands, helping them go towards the NFT space, plus also helping them just doing digital samples to make them more sustainable. Uh, we're a technology company, but we're more than 70% women. And I'm very proud of that fact because that makes a big difference in being uh, a gen general 3D company itself. So yeah, here are my contact details, carry at the fabricant.com or go to the Instagram or Twitter feed from The Fabricant. You can find me all over social media. I'm happy to answer any of your questions that you might have for me. So thank you so much. I think I'm still within time and I'm totally happy to take, take on any questions. Hello, Kerry. Here I am. Thank you very much. It was really, really, really interesting. Thank you. Absolutely. Super happy. So what, what do you see in the future? I mean, you have made with the fabricant so many incredible things, but what do you see in the future? What are the future perspectives? Yeah, great question. And there's uh, multiple different answers to that. Uh, one for the fashion brand is that all fashion brands will have to go towards uh, 3D creation. So 3D sampling, essentially. Uh, simply because the uh, supply chain is fairly broken, uh, especially now accelerated by Corona. But what I truly, truly see, you know, fashion industry is going towards virtualization. So for instance, uh, Gucci, they did a collaboration with Roblox. 
which is a gaming platform essentially trying to bridge the gap between gaming and and luxury fashion and i feel more and more brands are going to start going towards that space because it's it's all about the generations uh the the younger generations are all on digital platforms and for 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 fashion brands to be relevant they need to be on the platforms where the kids are right now uh to you know to ensure that they you know the future will stay there so i, I i'm a true believer that it's going to be a digital first approach to be able to sell the physical clothing so we're going to start seeing more and more of these digital experiences where the buying you know beyond e-commerce because right now e-commerce is super boring it's just a grid and i'm like i like that so we need to make that more interactive uh, more like gamified i would say so people are going to start purchasing their clothing you know digital first and then re re redeem the physical item much later on to the point that you know those interactive experiences are going to become bigger and more engaging where people are going to be actually more excited about the digital product uh, than the physical product that's a little bit future thinking but there's a lot of uh, things happening right now that are informing us that, that that's the space that it's going towards too okay thank you thank you yeah Absolutely. and i share the same thought i mean we now should aim to enhance the the digital experience and the the e-commerce for example the platforms so yeah the future is digital definitely absolutely and it will be it will be a combination of both you know you know digital and physical they will blur into each other and it's just you it's just about being creative how to use both in in a in a correct manner because you retail really needs to connect to kind of like a, a digital first approach because that's the first touch point for for anybody any user you know like it starts here from home on my mobile phone or my laptop and then later on in in retail but it, it depends where you are in the world because i can imagine it's very different in the netherlands to to italy for instance you know so it's 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 a cultural thing as well absolutely yeah okay so I invite you to to join us in the arena. You can find the link uh, on our website, and if you want to jump uh, there, and thank you. I'll, I'll come out, come, come hang out for another thirty minutes and uh, see uh, see how it works. I'm super curious. Yeah, the, there's a part dedicated to. So it's more like a, there's a gamification. You need to create your avatar. So. That's Love a that. Experience. Okay. okay, super cool. All right. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, hope to meet some of you there. And thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Thank you for accepting our invitation.